guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to feature Wagnerware and we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between these two number nine griddles. We'll get to that in a minute, but first I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, Wagnerware foundry. The foundry was uh, operated in Sydney, Ohio from 1891 to 1959. Wagner was one of the largest American manufacturers of cast iron products in the 20th century. Their product line included skillets, kettles, bean pots, Dutch ovens, roasters, fruit presses, scoops, broilers, griddles, waffle irons, muffin pans, and cornbread pans. The company also had a range of aluminum cookware. Uh, one thing that I do want to say is that these two griddle pans are very, very similar, but let me show you guys some of the differences here. Uh, here the handle you can tell is a little a little bit more rough around the edges in a sense compared to this one here uh, the one on the right here is my brother's uh, griddle and the one on the left is my griddle but let me show you the underside so you guys can take a look this is the underside of the griddles here is the number nine wagnerware that is mine and this one here is the wagnerware griddle number nine that is my brother's now both of these skillets have or griddles have the Wagner Ware stylized logo. Now the biggest difference here is that this one here says Sydney O and this one does not. This one actually does not have any um, any other information except for the size of the griddle and it also has a made in USA stamp on it. This one also has just a four digit number along with a letter. And one thing that I just want to mention is the biggest difference that you can see of how smooth the casting process was in the earlier manufacturing of the 20s and 30s versus the later where you can see it's very rough and almost um, just not, not a good casting. I'll be honest, the casting on these, not the best. And I have several of these uh wagner wear skillets that have the made in usa on the bottom and uh you know they're usually warped this one here is actually warped um and it's a lot thinner so thinner warped the heat ring is not as pronounced on this one i'm trying to see if i can show you guys heat ring not as pronounced versus this one where the heat ring is very very pronounced and it's a lot thicker now one thing that i also want to mention is how heavy the uh, skillet is on the left versus the one on the right so i do believe that the manufacturing was a lot better in the 20s and 30s and even prior to that so anyway with that let's see how well they do and if there's any differences in how well they cook okay guys first uh for this test we're going to be using the griddle uh from the 1959s and up and this is my brother's griddle, so let's see how well this one does. I'm gonna try flipping it, see what happens. Very minimal sticking. The underside also, with the seasoning that we built up, looks to be okay. No black residue, which I'm very happy for. Now let's see if it actually lets loose or if it gets stuck as well. No, it looks like it's still stuck, but it could be the heat might be a little too high. Now, one thing that I will say is that heat is the main factor for whether your uh, skillet is going to perform well with sliding eggs. Most of the time, that is one of the main reasons why you have a lot of food sticking. But with a little bit of work with the spatula, it, it still do, does a great job. Okay, and there we are. As you can see, it performed really well. Just use some butter and um, minimal sticking yes there was a little bit of work that was done with the spatula but either way i think it performs really well all 
All right, guys, so I did tilt it already a little bit and I can already see a difference. Um, I don't know exactly why. I don't know if this, it's the seasoning that I have already built up on my griddle, but I don't think this one's sticking. And we're using the same amount of heat and the same time. I preheated these for about a minute. There's minimal sticking now that I, you know, now that the pan has come up to heat, but I think there's just a tiny, tiny tad less. And uh, one thing that I do want to mention about this one is that this one is thicker. This one, the iron all around is just thicker and it is heavier. So there might be a difference in that sense. This one didn't overheat as much as the first one, but I think we're getting slightly better results in this one than I was in the uh, in the newer, the after the 1959 um, Wagner Wares uh, griddle. It still has tendencies to stick, but overall it's still doing a great job and uh, it's sliding around. So we're having better results on the older model. It could be that my griddle has a bit better seasoning because the newer one the seasoning on that griddle uh, isn't as built up, I want to say, than this one. But I'll say it again, the trick to achieving good results with cast iron cookware is heat. Heat control is your main thing that you need to get down in order for you to have great results, uh, you know, so nothing sticks on your cast iron cookware. And we've seen it, you know, uh, the uh, cast iron cookware channel. Uh, showed us a video. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but he did showcase a rusty skillet and he had sliding eggs in that skillet and it was just rusty as can be with no seasoning at all. All right, I think it's time to flip. I, I'm not sure if we're going to still have sliding eggs, but we'll see. No, and I, it appears they have stuck. <clears throat> We're going to turn down the heat just a tiny tad, but how badly have they stuck? Not as badly. And this one, a little bit of work with the spatula and we have no problem at all with uh, sliding eggs. A little bit of movement with the spatula and the eggs release pretty well. So. There is a slight difference and it could be that the uh, iron is a little bit thicker on the older model versus the newer where it's a little bit thinner. So it might transfer heat a lot quicker. That could be one, one of the reasons why we were having issues with the uh, first egg. So with that, um, let's wrap this up. I think we had great results here. And I know many of you do not like crispy eggs. Um, my preference is crispy eggs, especially with chilaquiles. If you guys have ever had chilaquiles, crispy eggs is just the best. Now, both of these eggs look pretty much the same. Not necessarily a big difference. The only thing that I can tell, and it's very minimal, but there, there is more char on the egg on the right versus the one on the left, which uh, the one on the right was actually in the newer Wagnerware griddle. And the one on the left is the Wagnerware Sydney O griddle. So perhaps a little bit more heat because of the thinness of the uh, of the iron. One thing that I do want to say is that there was more slickness and easier release of the egg on the Wagnerware Sydney O versus the uh, made in the USA Wagnerware griddle. And uh, with that, I will see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any questions or anything you want to add to this, please let me know in the comments.